Hello, this is Dr. Kassim Almashad from the Center for Mindfulness Canada in North Vancouver. Today's topic is about perfectionism. Oh, what a topic, perfectionism. It's something that has uh, shown up and peaks its head in my life in so many ways. Personally, it shows up. It shows up in the clients I work with in my counseling work. It shows up in the meditation programs that I teach. Uh, it shows up with friends, family, it kind of shows up a lot of places. So, I thought we uh, do something fun around perfectionism. Because even in doing this video, I noticed my mind wanting to go, Oh, I, ha I want to just research everything about perfectionism. I want to get it perfect. Which really, perfectionism, uh, the word itself begins with perfect, perfectionism. So let's do a, a little pop quiz. There's nothing like a little pop quiz uh, to soften uh, the tension we feel sometimes on perfectionism. So let's begin with the first yes or no question. Let's see what you think. Here we go. The first question. Perfectionism leads to success. And I'm going to give you some background music as you think about this yes or no question. And the answer is no, it does not. So interestingly, uh, some successful people are perfectionist. And what some research suggests is they're uh, successful despite of their perfectionism, not because of it. Because what we know about perfectionism, it has many qualities that impact mental health. So it's kind of a path or road that leads to lowered mood, so increase in depression, uh, leads to increase in anxiety, it impacts creativity, um, it even freezes people from taking on project, starting a project, and even quitting projects because of fear and fear of failure. So it has quite a bit of impact. And we're ready for the next question. Next, yes or no question. Perfectionism can help us get things done and done right. And the answer is... Nope, unfortunately. Many people who procrastinate struggle with perfectionism. Uh, perfectionists end up actually missing many deadlines, lowered productivity, the focus seems to change from looking at, you know, what's the right thing to do here to this fear of uh, failure and disapproval of others. So it changes the perspective in an unhelpful way, which ends up actually not helping us get things done, and it takes longer. So now we have arrived to our final bonus question. Here it is. Perfectionism can help us overcome challenges. And the answer is... No, it does not. When we're caught in perfectionist thinking, we're often saying to ourselves, I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it right. What ends up happening is we micromanage things and lose sight of the big picture. And I've heard that perfection is described in an interesting way, which is, it's a thief of time. It takes our time. And not only that, but we end up really closing to feedback, which is another challenge with perfectionism. Is feedback is received as deep criticism of our character, rather than different ways that we can improve on a whatever task we're doing. Or something we're learning. So there you have it, today's pop quiz. And just being kind to yourself, if you didn't get all the questions 100% perfect, totally okay. So how do we then work with perfectionism? We know that it's not really what's built up to be in our mind. It's not just something that's going to really help us. 
So how do we deal with it? Because perfectionism is just trying to help us do well, do good. But we need to avoid the, the pit hole that we can fall into with it. Now, what's interesting is the research looks at there's a difference between that and what's also called healthy striving or excellence. There's some differences in that. One of the differences they look at is actually when perfectionists don't get their goal or they fail at something, it's quite devastating. But non-perfectionist, the reaction is different, is they take it as uh, something to learn, something to reflect on. They still get disappointed, but it's not taken as a defect of sense of self. Perfectionists do that. They take mistakes as a defect, as something that's unacceptable, and then reinforces this sense of being not good enough. So healthy striving and excellence has a different orientation. That orientation is self-focused, with questions like, how can I improve? How can I learn? How can I grow from this? So there's a reflection process which means there's some room to accept that we'll make mistakes. And then we can learn from these mistakes. And that can build confidence. So in order to do that, there's what's called the courage of imperfection. This is a, a saying that uh, a late psychiatrist from the previous century, Dreikers, uses, which is quite an uh, interesting combination of words. The courage of imperfection. So that is the orientation of healthy striving, excellence, very different from perfectionist. That orientation is externally focused. What are others going to think of me? Am I going to meet their standard or expectation? It's a different orientation. So as we keep moving towards excellence, towards healthy striving, the shift uh, also becomes on what is the process we can be engaged in, not just the outcome. And are we there? Did we get there? Just focus on the learning, the growing, the process itself. And lastly, to keep in mind that healthy striving is actually a predictor of optimism and self-compassion. These are wonderful traits that we can uh, keep developing when we steer towards healthy striving excellence. So it might be worthwhile for all of us to keep reflecting on how we can uh, move towards excellence and allow it to bring the best in us um, without the cost of perfectionism. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I look forward to sharing more videos with you in the future. Until then, please feel free to visit my website at Dr. Kasim Almashad to take a look at upcoming programs. Until then, may your moments be filled with ease and may you be present in as many of them. Thank you.